Alright, somehow along the way, I did not give an, a video overview of issue number two. I went from one to three. And now, oh boy, about a year since issue two came out, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So let's dive in. Issue two, it seems like so long ago. It was um, the summer 2010 issue. Came out in about mid-July. We had a launch party in early August and ahead of NASFIC. Uh, big two-page table of contents because I wasn't selling many ads then, so no interior cover ad. It was just a big, big inspired by Inner Zone kind of uh, teaser images spread. We dive into our contents, and this is the best photo I've ever taken. It was reprinted in, uh, or maybe first appeared in the North Carolina um, Literature Review. That's John Castle at his office down at NC State. And back then, I was individually numbering every single issue. So, wow. Don't know how I managed doing that. But anyway, the table of contents stuff hasn't really changed. None of that stuff. Um, wow, interior color. Do you believe that? So uh, we had interior color back then. Looks like I got some... Uh, I got this picture from some Russian photographers and uh, to go along with Paul Selmer's Echoes of the Bouncing Ball. It's a fairly short story, um, and the, the uh, dragonfly photo does make plenty of good sense. So that's pretty much all. That's a, like I said, a pretty short story. Um, they get an ad here from Panverse. Panverse has been one of my supporters all the time, so there's some Panverse cards. Of course, all my Panverse books are safely in my special library somewhere far away from here. Uh, Joey Jordan illustration for Cowlin Fires by the Dragon's Tail. This story first appeared in the uh, Stories for Haiti uh, effort earlier in the year. Little little spot for escape artists, different podcasts. Here is uh, Hero Salt by Melissa Mead. This was one, our feature length story for the issue. This is a great story about uh, scientists from a future Earth. We're, we're running out of biodiversity here, and uh, scientists go into distant uh, star systems to find biodiversity. And one such science expedition finds a, a uh, planet with centaurs on it. So it's uh, one of the longer stories I've published still to this day. And one of my favorites. So here's a little spot for um, a couple of Norlana Books titles, Clark Ruff Phoenix and Warrior Wiseman 3. And here is... Um, a local author, Gwendolyn Clare, who's gone on to be in Asimov's and Clark's World and all kinds of good places. And I've got another story coming up, uh, one of these issues in the future. This is The Other Lila by Gwendolyn Clare, and she got to read this at the launch party. Um, this is a little bit of text art. That's the, the absolute limits of what I can do. <laughs> uh, here's an, an ether, ether, ether Age plug. So you end up with the finished book finally. Took a took a long time, actually, a lot longer than expected, to get the book uh, finally finished and and in its final state. But it's uh, been a good a good thing. It's the interior art, these timeline things. Really enjoyed getting that in my hands finally, because that's one of those projects that was really inspirational along the way. So here's stuff. I just don't I don't take the room to do this kind of thing anymore. But this is a uh, Eerie Gray's story, the sad story of the Naga. So I found a um, some art by Rebecca Camfield, a British artist. And uh, it's a pretty cool Naga here that would fit really well with the story. And, uh, you know, that's a, it's one of, again, one of my favorite stories. A lot, almost all those are my favorite stories, so I probably shouldn't keep saying that. Got a spot from Apex Books for Dark Faith. It's got a local local author in it, Richard Dansky. Got some, some bookmarks over there. I can pile the bookmarks. That kind of, you know, goes along with this uh, Richard Dansky feature we did. So, um... We got a uh, an excerpt of Firefly Rain. You can see the lovely Firefly Rain, and uh, the excerpt from that, and then an interview with J. M. McDermott. And here's part two of of Closed System. Now that we've seen all all the way to the end of part four, it's kind of interesting to go back and just and read and see how Mike developed kind of the different things that would come to fruition as far as the 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 homes for the gorillas and and all the different things that were coming along. The Wasted Eye kind of giving us a humorous break, but all along he's developing this pretty good scientific moral story. 
There's a spot from Bain. That was, you know, thank you guys. Here's uh, the book, Children No More. So that's out in a, in a paperback now. It's been so long. And again, another thing I just I just have stopped finding the time and space to do was these happening spreads. I kind of miss doing that, but you just uh, can't do it all. I <laughs> can't do it all anymore. But, you know, we used to keep our, these nice calendars of what had happened and what was still coming. And that was a lot of fun. Um, and this was, I think, the last issue I did the poetry for. So we've got uh, David M. Harris, Helen R. Peterson, Reggie Lutz, and a pretty feature po poem from uh, J.P. Wickwire, who's gone on to be a, a frequent reviewer for me, which has been great. Editorial in the middle, in the middle of the, the issue. So that's kind of moved around a little bit. Um, here's a spot from Tachyon and a spot from Small Beer Press. And then we have a pretty big feature with John Kessel. This is an essay from 2001 that I really liked, and he let me reprint it, so that was great. And uh, that goes on and on. And it's just a great essay about ethics and SF, and do we need a, an ethical singularity like we have a technology singularity? Um, it's kind of timely that we're talking about this, because um, we talked, he talked a little bit about, about uh, Werner Vinge's papers and, and books, and um, Vinge's new book, the Children of the Sky is coming out this fall. And here we kind of uh, kept going. Got some photos from Vanessa Reyes, who took these photos at Fractal in Medellin. And uh, this is a pretty at-length interview. We, we sat down, and the, the video is already on YouTube for that. So, yeah, we, talk, we talked a good long time. And this is a, another one of those things that we don't really do too often. This is a huge kind of feature-length review of Sherry Priest Bone Shaker. Yeah. Sherry Priest Bone Shaker. She'll be coming to the area next summer for Contemporal as the guest of honor. And uh, Joe got to talk about writing this review at the launch party. If you were there, you, you know why I'm kind of laughing. And um, here's a nice review of uh, The Dream of Perpetual Motion. It's a novel by Dexter Palmer, reviewed by Natanya, Natanya Barron. So this uh, was issue two in her four-issue streak of being a contributor, which ended after the first four issues. But she'll be back. And then a, a nice uh, interview from Dexter with me. And the uh, last bit here, I think, is an interview with Hope Larson. So she uh, is an Asheville graphic novelist who has now moved out to L.A., but, um, you know, she called North Carolina home for a long time, and uh, it was really nice of her to give me the time and the art to, to pre-print in here. And, uh, again, a little bit of interior color, can you believe it? So, nice interview with Hope. And uh, another one of those things I just don't take the room and time for anymore is this big two-page full-color contributor <laughs> spread. can't believe I don't do that anymore, but time and space and money. And then the back cover by Pyre. Again, thanks, thanks to Pyre. It's been uh, issues two, three, four, five, and now coming out with issue six. They've been in advertisers uh, that whole time, and thanks a lot, guys. And that's pretty much what I had to show you for issue two. So that's the overview of issue two. Hope you guys check it out and enjoy.